That's right, you hear it here first. Derek Carr and Antonio Brown are working out and thinking about wife swapping. Yes, that's how Mike Florio gets hits. He writes a bogus story that he hears from someone named Larry Fitzgerald Sr. That is the father of Larry Fitzgerald of the Arizona Cardinals. That the Raiders, breaking all tampering rules, have offered Tom Brady a $60 million contract for two years. Now, who would put out such information? It wouldn't come from an agent, would it? Trying to boost uh, Tom Brady's uh, salary in New England. Does he really want to leave the New England Patriots, which since, especially since 9-11, have the luxury of having, it's not just the 12th man on the field, it's the 13th, the 14th, the 15th, the 16th, and the man up in the booth, and the one in New York. They have all these referees on their side. They're allowed to break most rules, and they're going to go, I mean, he's going to go to the, uh, the Las Vegas Raiders, a team that is very much in rebuild mode. I mean, it's got really insane. And if you go on the Raiders message boards, it is is even more insane. Yeah, get rid of cards, both time. He's only the the uh, the best uh, Raider quarterback statistically in the history of the Raiders. By far, by the way, now. And if you really want to compare him to those other quarterbacks, I think you, I think you better go back and look at those teams they played on. You talk about Kenny Stabler; he played on the elite teams. Yes, he did many great things, but they were playing a, a different type of football back then. That was the heyday for the Raiders. And it carries over into the Plunkett era. And <laughs> look at Plunkett. Plunkett was a very average quarterback. He relied on a defense, especially in 1984, when they won the Super Bowl. The 83 season, uh, you might have to go back to the time where they weren't really keeping statistics on sacks to the 1967 Raiders to find such a dominant defensive line. Uh, and they had a good running game with Marcus Allen. In 1980, you know, it was... Luck had a lot to do with it. I mean, they didn't have the best defense, but they had opportunistic players that would make the come up with the, the the play at the right time. Someone like a Lester Hayes with all the interceptions he had. I mean, he used to just mug the wide receivers. It, at today's game, he would be benched because there'd be so many pass interference calls. Uh, Michael Haynes is more the whatever you want to call it, the the more of the cover man. But if you look at what happens when those teams stop doing excellent things and uh, struggle a bit, Plunkett is exposed as an interception machine, just like a lot of rated quarterbacks were. They used to throw the ball up for grabs. Rated quarterbacks are not liked. You can go through the history of Raider quarterbacks, and you're only going to find a few of them that were liked. You know, probably, I mean, you'd have to go way back to uh, Tom Flores. I don't know how loved he was during his playing time. 
I think most of his love came afterwards. You got Dark. You got LaMonica. Daryl LaMonica. The Mad Bomber. He never won a Super Bowl or anything. Then you have Stable, who only won one Super Bowl. Should not forget that. Then you have Plunkett. After those guys, you, you really got to reach. I mean, Jeff Hostetler. He was loved, respected. He would just, you know, he would, he would stay in there, take hits. As opposed to other quarterbacks that came later. I mean, around that time. No, is it later? I can't remember now. People like Jay Schrader, people hated him. They hated Mark Wilson. Despite the fact he helped the Raiders win the Super Bowl in 1983. Boy, 84 when they won the Super Bowl. And speaking of, like, Jeff Hostetler. Most Raiders loved his grit and everything. But his wide receiver was Tim Brown. And Tim Brown had some words recently. And it basically said that you can't judge Derek Carr until he has a guy that's a number one wide receiver that you know on third down the defense is going to have to defend against this guy. He's basically talking about himself and how uh, it was him and Jeff Hostetler. They didn't have a running game for a lot of those t years. Jeff Hostetler was often injured because he was taking so many hits. And Tim Brown, I remember, he didn't want him taking those hits. But he was taking those hits, waiting for Tim Brown to get open, because Tim Brown could get open. Now, I've added another Brown to the title of this video. It starts off as a joke, but it's really not a joke. Because... I'm looking at Mike Mayock and John Gruden and their boss, their real boss. He's still in charge, despite the fact he has a bowl cut. He's still in charge. Mark Davis, from what I've read, is still pissed off about the Antonio Brown, Brown thing. And I can imagine conversations between Mayock and and Gruden about Antonio Brown. They know he's a fucktard. Everyone knows he's a fucktard. But last year, I just remember those games when Tony Romo was calling. He was like, there's no one open. Derek Carr's wide receivers could not get open. That's why they were so bad in the red zone. You can talk about De uh, Waller all you want. About They'll point out the next generation stats. He was one of the fastest receivers in football last year. He's not that fast to start out. He's long-legged. That's, that's where a lot of his speed is. It's not Antonio Brown quickness. He's not coming off the ball. He's not threatening anyone right off the ball where Antonio Brown does that sort of thing. You know, Tyreek Hill does that sort of thing. They give him a cushion. And all he has to do is do a you know, back shoulder fade or some sort of curl route or any of those type of you know quick hitches, stuff like that. Raiders don't have a player like that. And who do they have? Players that drop pass after pass. I mean you can blame Derek Carr all you want, because he's the one that touches the football only second to the center. But he does not have a number one wide receiver. And I wouldn't be surprised if this sort of thing doesn't happen. I still think the Raiders need to select a wide receiver at number 12. Get the best wide receiver they can at number 12. Providing it's one that is going to be, that at least looks on paper. They can run routes, take the top off the defense, 
not just with Barna. I don't think they want to do that, especially that high in the draft. If you're just going to do that, you might as well pick someone later. There's plenty of guys, I guarantee there's going to be someone in the combine who just sets it sets it on fire. You know, he's going to he's going to do the 40 time 4.21 or something and everyone's going to think, "Ooh. Raiders had some wide receivers last year that were very fast and they didn't last." got kicked off the team, some of them, all of them, actually, Davis, and I can't remember the other guy's name, one they got from, uh, was on Arizona before, Nelson, is it, or was it the other one, I don't know, they're all the same, they were not involved, they need a professional wide receiver, so Derek Carr will be wife swapping with Antonio Brown, Antonio Brown will first have to get married first, um, this is after his, uh, what does he need? He needs a life coach. Derek Carr is going to be his life coach. You heard it here first. Derek Carr is going to be Antonio Brown's life coach. But that is how Florio gets his hits. And it's all over, like, Bleacher Report. Bleacher Report's one of these websites that puts all together articles, um, usually categorized by team and the Raider thing is Brady to the Raiders Brady to the Raiders this isn't going to happen and how is this even good they're getting Derek Carr on the cheap right now and Derek Carr had better stats than Brady last year you want an efficient quarterback and it took so long for the Raiders to get a quarterback like Derek Carr you're just going to give it up for a guy who is 43 years old? And especially the tuck rule game? I mean, you gotta, you definitely got to question John Gruden's uh, his state of mind if he actually thinks this is a good idea. I don't think he does. I don't think you want to tank down all that money and set you up for uh, disaster. So I watched Tom Brady last year in some games. I'm from New England, remember? They're always on TV. And he looks like an old man. He had Ju Julian Edelman. And there's all these other excuses that he didn't have a wide receiver. Yeah, he had Antonio Brown. But the Patriots got rid of him. He didn't have Gronk. He didn't have a tight end. I'm sure they had tight ends on their roster. I'm sure they could have made trades. They always do. I'm saying stop looking at Walla. For him, who was Cook or Cooks or whatever his name is. They went to New Orleans and his stats just dropped off. Why is that? Because rate of wide receivers can't get open. They are occupied by the team's uh, uh, cornerbacks. And the, basically, Derek Carr is taking advantage of the uh, weakest link. And the weakest link is teams being able to cover large tight ends. And Walla is definitely a large tight end. And so that's why you get those stats. He, he gave Cook or whatever... A uh, career year and a huge contract. He should thank he should thank Derek Carr for that. And Derek Carr throws a lot to the running backs, but then again, that is Gruden's system. Remember, Gruden designed this system, and it's not Derek Carr's uh, strong suit. He just happens to be a very accurate quarterback usually, but his strong suit is a spread offense. You talk about him not running and stuff. He probably would run more in a spread offense because sometimes things break down. But uh, show me his weapons. You can't. And don't say Tyrell Williams is some sort of number one wide receiver or even a number two. He can't catch. He was 
he was getting catches from uh, someone named uh, Rivers. Did you watch some of Rivers' games last year? The guy's got a spaghetti arm now. He's lost his arm. Remember Sharp when he lost his arm and Derek Hart won the job from him? Yeah. Right now, Rivers is in high demand as a stopgap for a team that wants to uh, draft a quarterback. I'd throw away notions about that, too. Oh, the Raiders have two number one picks. They could trade Derek Khan and get a number two. This is what they say. They don't, they don't give you anything anymore for quarterbacks. And you're starting all over again with a complete unknown. At least you know Derek Carr is going to manage the game. Now give him a weapon. Give him some weapons. And I think things will be different. Raiders had trouble in the red zone, and uh, Derek Carr did not have those problems before uh, when he had Crabtree and Cooper. Both of them knew how to get open. They both knew how to drop passes, too. That's one of the problems, and they do. Derek Carr definitely needs someone who can catch the ball. Antonio Brown is the best thing out there and the best option, and that is why I'm saying... That that is a prediction that is more likely to come true than Tom Brady is going to be uh, coming to the Raiders. No, it's it's equally uh, for certain that uh, Brown could go back to the Patriots. But if the Raiders are going to be in any sweet stake, sweet stakes, and um, sweep stakes, it should be for Antonio Brown. I know that's going to make a lot of people pissed off. And I didn't like it when he did all this bullshit. And I'm not going to overthink things. I'm going to think them through. I'm going to think Mayock and Gruden having a conversation about the problems with the Raiders offense. I'm going to I'm going to see them. I'm going to see Mayock look past being called a cracker. Come on, anyone who's white, who said anything to a black person before, has been called a cracker before. If they get, if they start to get on a black person's case or whatever, uh, or or if the black person is losing the um, argument, they oftentimes call a person a cracker. And then the re- roles reverse rather easily. When people are losing arguments, they often go to derogatory words. And so they go to a pejorative like Cracker. And what does it mean? Does Mayock really care about that? No. He doesn't. Remember, Antonio Brown asked to be released. Uh, Mike Mayock did not cut him. Do you get that? Do you get that little tiny slither of information right there? Mike Mayock did not get phased by being called a Cracker. Because he's the adult in the room, as they say. My, my, Mike Mayock, in my opinion, having a, a real conversation with, with Gruden about the best best way to move forward to make this team the best it can possibly be would be to take a chance on Antonio Brown again. I still think they should draft a wide receiver, though, early in the draft. Raiders have many holes, and the biggest hole they have is losing to the Chiefs every year, and they need some firepower, because we just watched in a Super Bowl, it doesn't matter how good your defense is, Patrick Mahomes can still pick you apart. That's not to say they don't need to go there as well, as I've said before, they should go after Chris Jones. I thought they should have drafted him. I think I think I want to say the Chiefs traded up and got him. I remember thinking on the board the Raiders needed a DT. And, and he was on the board, and I thought that would have been a good selection. But Chiefs got to him. That's the way things go. 
Now let's see if my clickbait works as well as Florio's.